Hello, welcome back to Streamlit part 13, where we're going to take a look at connections and secrets. To begin, we're going to take a look at the Streamlit documentation, just two uh, pages, the secrets.toml and st.secrets sections. The secrets.toml, let me go to it also in the code. To learn about how to store secrets, this is in the .streamlit folder within the root directory of your project, as you can see on my screen. And then you put a file in there called secrets.toml to store all the secrets. Also make sure to add this to your git ignore so you're not sharing any uh, and things like that. GitHub. But within this file, there's some ways of storing secrets. First, you can just add variables like I did with the Jane name and then my password. You can also add these subsections where it's connections.petsdb, and then you can add the db URL. Secondly, we're going to take a look at this st.secrets page where it kind of defines how to access these secrets within your code. And probably a better way to take a look at this is actually just to start writing the code. Here is the template for the code. After you have this written down, you can start the app and open up your web browser. Here is the web browser. First, we're going to look at how to access these variables within your application. There's two main ways of accessing a Streamlit secret. You can either access it using the brackets, like a dictionary access, or you can use a dot and then the variable name. But the variable name obviously needs to not have a space within it. So if you have a space in your variable name, you need to do it the dictionary approach, accessing that key value pair. That's essentially what this TOML is. It's just a key value pair, almost like a dictionary. And then the subsections are paths down into that tree of a dictionary. Looks like I forgot I copied a bit too much over, but this is also how you connect to a database. One difference between accessing a database URL, so this right here, the name is actually accessing that database URL. But how I think about it is st.connections will then go to here where you have these connections in your, S your secrets TOML. And then you're passing it the name of that connection, which then it accesses all the information. If you had more information in here for password, uh, API key, things like that for this connection, it will then be able to access it within that method of Streamlit. But here it's just accessing this database, this simple SQLite database, and you give it the type of database connection. After doing that, we're just going to write a quick little script to populate that database if you don't have it. And then we can also then access values within that database. Here, we're going to start generating that data. So as you can see, we're just using with that session, we're then executing if the table exists, make it exist basically. And then we're going to add some variables to it or add some values to it, loop over those values and add them to the database. Finally, just so we can show how we're able to then retrieve those values, you can add this, which adds a data retriever where we query the database for everything in the pets owner, which is the table name. And then this TTL is time to live, which basically will kill the connection after it's alive for X amount of time. This is pretty sure in seconds. Important to put this because if you don't do that, you can have a connection that's surviving way too long and can cause security issues and things like that. But you can also just close the connection as well. I hope you learned something during this tutorial video. And that is it for connections and secrets. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time. <music>